Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the rest of the cards in the Call of the Mountain expansion, the first expansion of the Call of the Mountain set. Uh, we finally know the last 12 cards. We didn't have these in the other uh, preview stream that we did yesterday because they were just released to us uh, just a little bit ago. So we're going to go ahead and go through them. Um, they're brand new. I honestly have not read through these cards at all yet. So this is going to be my first time reading them myself. We got um, Call of the Mountain coming out tomorrow, the 26th. That'll be our first stream with the brand new expansion. Definitely super excited about it. Excited for Targon. All right, let's take a look at what these cards do. So our first card, we're just going to be going from left to right. Um, going down these 12, looks like we have our first Bilgewater card in the new set. We have Jack the Winner. Uh, five mana, five six. Well, a five six for five. That's that's big. That's above the above the curve. Usually, as we talked about, five fives for five is where, really where most of the cards are at on the curve. So a five six is just going to be above that. Round start. Create a fleeting sleep with the fishes in hand. So not only do you get a larger body than normal, but then also round start, you get to create a fleeting card in hand. So you get card advantage as well. This card's already looking good. Let's see. What is Sleep with the Fishes? Probably right down here. Sleep with the Fishes. Zero mana. Um, it is slow speed. And it is fleeting. So it's a slow speed card. Deal two to an ally to deal two to the enemy Nexus. Wow. Wow. They're getting more Nexus, more direct Nexus damage in this set. That's something they talked about like with the um, our our previous expansion, right, um, Rising Tides, that that added a lot of Nexus damage and that they were a little worried that they added in too much Nexus damage. So yeah, this is basically slow speed Noxion Fervor that only goes upstairs. That's something you're not going to want to use all of the time, but you get that as a fleeting card each and every turn um, with your Jack the Winner. Looks like a great five drop for a Bilgewater Burn deck which there are quite a few. Bilgewater Burn decks is a really good blocker. Uh, maybe you pair this with Elusives, where you can have this be like your just big, beefy blocker, where your Elusives are going and winning the game. Um, yeah, you could have that with with Vladimir. That's true. That, that could be um, a Vladimir thing. Yeah, going with, yeah, it could go in your Swain Twisted Fate deck. Absolutely. Um, level up that Swain super fast. For sure with that. And, um, you know, great. Yeah, and great with leveled up Swain, right? Like you have your leveled up Swain, um, then you can deal damage to them and stun something. It is slow speed, so, you know, it's not going to play as well as it looks, probably. But, yeah, Jack looks like the winner here. That's That looks like to be a pretty good epic. Um, ooh, play that with the Undying. So you're dealing damage to your Undying. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. If you're playing like Bilgewater with Sejuani, you know, again, you can use that to be able to frostbite enemies. Um, that helps level up your gangplank. Uh, yeah, that, that Nexus damage. I mean, there's just so many things to do with Nexus damage. Obviously, all the plunder cards, there's so many reasons to want Nexus damage. And it's good with Powder Monkey. That's for sure. You can, you, you know, it's great with, uh, with Powder Monkey. It looks like our next card is going to be a Powder Monkey card. Um, you know, you can just be doing damage to the powder monkeys to do damage to them. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of slow speed spells. Um, let's see. We have slow, 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 slow. They're all slow. So, ba yeah, basically everything in the set is either burst or slow. I think they're getting rid of fast for some reason. There's two fast speed spells in the whole set. And then like double digit burst and double digit slow and too fast. Yeah, three damage every every turn with um Yeah, you can have your Dawn Speakers, Monkey Idol, have tough on uh tough on your monkey idol with the chain vest and then Dawn Speakers and Jack the Winner and just keep on doing that damage. There we go. All right, Monkey Business, another Bilgewater card. Let's see, two mana, slow speed, summon a Powder Monkey, plunder, summon another Powder Monkey. 
next round. Okay, so if if we're playing this with Plunder, which is definitely what we're going to be trying to do, we get a Powder Monkey this turn and a Powder Monkey next turn. Um, for two mana and one card, that's and that's two spell mana. I mean, that's basically what... Um, like, that's, this is a good card. Like, that's basically what Monkey Idol is. Monkey Idol is three Powder Monkeys, but you're spending three... Um, you know, three regular mana on a Powder Monkey. This, with the Plunder, is two Powder Monkeys for two spell mana. And that's a lot better, just two spell mana. So yeah, pretty pretty good card here. Now, you're definitely going to want to have Plunder enabled, but... Yeah, this is just another way, like, if you combine, like, three Monkey Idols, three Monkey Business, Jack the Winner... Like, your deck's going to be doing a ton of Nexus damage with just, like, that kind of stuff. And it's not going to be easy to just get through. You're going to have a lot of, like, little blockers with these uh, Powder Monkeys as well. So it's not like it's going to be, like, super easy to race. Uh, you get to attack for just free with two ones. You get to block for free with two ones. Um, you get the Nexus damage still either way. Um, yeah, this... This is, these are two pretty good cards for Bilgewater. Um, you know, you can start combining this with, you know, with all the other stuff that Bilgewater has. These are, these are good upgrades here. All right, we're starting with two good cards. Uh, let's see, for the Fallen, eight mana slow. When you summon an elite, reduce my cost by one. For each ally that died this round, summon a Dauntless Vanguard. Yeah. So if you have a, a bunch of things die in combat, you know, then you play uh, this card and you get a bunch of Dauntless Vanguards. Meh. Um, yeah, like classic, of course. Yeah, sure. Ruination than this. I don't, I mean, as somebody who's played elite decks recently, I don't think I would put this in an elite deck. So this seems like a good, um, this seems like a good card for expeditions. I, I don't really think that necessarily one for constructed now when it says okay when it says when you summon an elite reduce my cost by one does that mean that for the fallen has to be in your hand and then you summon an elite or can you play can you be playing your elites and draw your for the fallen later and now you draw it and it's a four mana card because you've played four elites i'm not sure exactly how that works yeah, I know it. Yeah, it doesn't say while in hand, but I'm not sure. You think it'd be four mana? Because that would make it a lot better. If that's the case, now we're talking. If it has to be in hand to get the cost reduction, I'm less excited about it. But if you could be mulliganing it from your opening hand and, you know, always mulligan it and you just draw it later on and it costs a lot less. Um,. Okay. Um, yeah, Vanguard Squire only reduces cost while it's in hand. That is correct. And it says when it when I'm... Yeah. When you summon an elite, reduce my cost by one, and that's only while in hand. And, right? And so that's probably the same way. Yeah, because Vanguard Squire has the exact same language. When you summon an elite, reduce my cost by one. And that only works in hand. So this is probably just in hand, and therefore I'm not excited about it. Uh, 10 mana slow. What is this? Singular will. Pick an ally. Recall all other units. Okay. Okay. Um, probably not playing that. I can't really imagine us playing that. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I guess you get to pick a Yasuo and that recall like just kills all their other stuff. Then it bounces everything else to your hand. 10 mana slow. No, we're just not. We're just not doing that. <laughs> Sorry, Singular Will. Um, no, that is just too expensive and so kind of meh. Hey, style unit. All right, not very excited about this one with Ionia. They do not want... If it's a spell that interacts, they're not going to make it any good. 
All right, Basilisk, Bloodseeker. Um, okay, oh, this is Solitary Monk on the art. That's that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Yes, I think if... I think so. Pick an ally, recall a... Well, maybe not. No, maybe not. Nice. Style unit. Yeah, that was probably from from um, from Bob. Bob gifted out five subs earlier, so that, that's probably where he got that. So no, I don't. I think it. If you kill the thing that you're targeting with the singular will, I think it will still resolve and it'll still recall everything. So it'll just you know be a recall everything. I think it'll still happen, but that doesn't. That's not very good for ten mana. All right, Basilisk Bloodseeker, seven mana, seven four Overwhelm, play deal one to an ally and an enemy, four times. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so we only have four health, which is a downside for sure. It's going to be easy to kill this thing. However, upsides. We're talking about seven power with overwhelm in a region that loves to do damage to the opponent and wants large overwhelm units. We're talking about the seven mana slot. There's not really seven drops, right? There's a lot of good eight drops. There's not really seven drops. So it, it doesn't have any competition. So if you want to play Basilisk Bloodseeker, there's no competition. Play, deal one to an ally and an enemy four times. That just says an enemy. That doesn't say an enemy unit. So I assume that can go to the Nexus. And so you can basically, you know, basically have a Decimate attached to a seven power Overwhelm body for seven mana, which is pretty sweet. Of course, you're like probably killing off one of your own allies for that. That seems to work great with, like if you have like imagine if you have like Crimson Disciple that has tough, and right like 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 you put you have Crimson Disciple with Chain Vest, and you play this Bloodseeker, and so you do one damage to your Crimson Disciple four times, and the enemy Nexus four times. Well, you're doing another damage to the enemy Nexus another four times. Man, good thing they nerfed Crimson Disciple. Um. <laughs> so then, yeah. So then it just would. So you do eight Nexus damage. Some people say it does not do damage to the Nexus. I don't know why it wouldn't. It just says an enemy. And the ne the Nexus is an enemy. Whoa! All right. Bob with a donation deck. Okay, cool. Well, I will I will take a look at that. And um, yeah, we will. I will uh, play that one soon. We'll probably play that tomorrow. Thank you, Bomb. Um, so I would think it would go to the enemy Nexus. But maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's If it does not go to the enemy Nexus, I'm much less... Uh, you know, much less inclined to play this card. You know, if you're just doing 1 to 1 of your allies and 1 to an enemy unit 4 times for a 7-4 Overwhelm, eh, we, we could probably do some better stuff. Probably. But... As far as like those harrowing decks, you know, those Noxus harrowing decks, think about those Noxus harrowing getting 7-4 overwhelms. You don't get the playability, but you're just, you know, think about harrowing putting in 7-4 overwhelms. That seems pretty awesome. So yeah, maybe Bloodseeker, maybe, you know, maybe this could go in a, in a Noxus deck. Maybe it's not a 3 of, you know, maybe this is just like a 1 or a 2 of. Kind of go from here, and then you have, um, you know, there's just so much Nexus damage potential. With like this kind of card and also with um you know captain farron of course at eight mana another huge overwhelm that gets you a bunch of decimates oh with verena oh meme deck with this and verena where you have six mana you play uh what is it scar mother verena i think three eight overwhelm that whenever it takes one damage you give it plus three plus zero and then you play this thing and so you give your Scar Mother plus 12 plus 0. And now you have like 20 Overwhelm damage between the two of them, basically. <laughs> Dang. 
Yeah, if you have a Swain in play, you just stun, stun their entire board. <laughs> you know, he's done four things. That's true as well. So, I don't know. There's... I don't know how super competitive Bloodseeker is going to be, but there's definitely some cool combo potential with this card and definitely some cool things that it can do, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, basically, the expansion should be out in about 24 hours or so. Um, maybe a little bit more than 24 hours. But basically, around that. Okay, Apprehend. Two mana slow. Stun an enemy. If you have a Darius Rally. Well, that's pretty awesome. All right, so you have to have a Darius in play, and then you get to Rally in Noxus. Plus, you stun something. So This is definitely going to be used offensively, not defensively. Um, how it's slow speed stun an enemy. You know, like, you can't just, like, they go to, they have the attack token, they go to combat. So, like, I don't, this is not a card that's going to be used in control decks. This is definitely an aggro card. Um, stun an enemy if you have a Darius Rally. I don't think... Two mana, slow stun an enemy. Like, let's say you don't have Darius in your deck. Are you ever going to play this card? Probably not. Probably not playing this card at two mana, stun an enemy in just any other Noxus deck that's not Darius. So you probably have to have Darius and try to get some rallies going with it. And then I think it's it's definitely reasonable. Yeah, because Guile is one mana slow stun, and that's true. So why would you ever play this if you don't have Darius when you have Guile? That's a good, good call. And nobody really plays Guile. It may, may be that nobody will really end up playing this either. To be honest. But it is flashy, and you can you can dream about the scenarios where, um, you know, you get that extra attack. You have a Darius, and you get an extra attack. Like how's how's the game not over if you have a Darius in play? You're getting an extra attack, and you're stunning their best enemy, their best unit. Like how's the game not over? <laughs> uh, no, I would not say it definitely makes Darius better. No, no, I wouldn't say that at all. Usually having Darius in play and also playing spells, you're g gonna win. Darius is that kind of champion. So no, I wouldn't say that this card makes Darius better. Because I don't, I don't think those are the games that the Darius deck is struggling winning. Whenever it has Darius in play and it, and then it's also casting spells, that's not usually the game that a Darius deck struggles with. All right, four mana, Tri-Beam Improbulator. Okay, we got a PNZ card here. Four mana, deal one to a unit. Summon a random one-cost unit. While I'm in hand, increase both, increase both by one when you play a three-cost card. Uh, okay. This card is actually sneaky good. This card's sneaky good. At four mana, deal one to a unit and then summon a random one cost unit. That's not great, but it's not horrible, but that's not great. Kind of compare it to, um, uh, you know, cause we are talking about spell mana. Spell mana is, is easier to, easier to have than unit mana. You can kind of compare this to Petty Officer. Petty Officer, three mana, you get a three two and you get a random one cost unit. So you're doing one damage instead of getting a three two. Obviously getting the three two is better. Um, four spell mana, three regular mana, those are basically the same. Um, so, so, you know, like at face value, worse than Petty Officer, but each time you play a three cost card, I don't know, like Petty Officers or, or any three cost card, you you increase both of those by one if you have this improbulator in hand. So now you're dealing two to a, so what that means is you, you will deal two to a unit and summon a random two cost unit. Now we're talking four mana deal two to a unit, 
summon a random two cost unit. That's pretty awesome. Like that's that's a good that's a good card. Um, you know, get to Mystic Shot something and get a two drop for four spell mana. That's a good card. That's a good card. Um if you can get if you can play two three cost cards and now you get to do this twice now this is deal three to a unit and summon a random three cost unit. Now that is amazing for four spell mana. I think this card's gonna be sneaky good. I like it. I like this one. This is definitely a card that I'm gonna be excited to play and try out myself. Yeah, so just need to build around three cost cards. There are a lot of good three cost cards. Um you know, Puff Cat Peddler. I do love me some Puff Cat Peddler, and we could play um, Puff Cat Peddler and Improbulator quite a bit. Hmm. That's a pretty cool one. All right. Um, okay, so yeah, the patch notes are now out. So yeah, so I'll, we'll go over that also. Um, okay, they, there's only four things. Okay, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. All right, Star Shepherd, one mana, O3. When you heal a damaged ally, grant me plus two, plus zero. So this is definitely supposed to be in like they've they've shown some different uh, cards. Um, there was like a I think just even the the art for this thing, like the four mana, four five that like heals an ally, like a heals an, an ally and heals your nexus as well. Now it says when you heal a damaged ally, I would assume that means just the units, not like healing your your um, nexus. But still, I don't I don't feel like this is a card that we're really playing. Um, this is definitely like a an anti aggro card. Like if if aggro becomes really big and you just need a one drop, that's where you're playing Star Shepherd. So this is the kind of card that like if you need this because the metagame turns really aggressive with cheap units and you need a blocker. Now we're talking for Star Shepherd, but otherwise, um, this isn't going to be something that's going to normally be in uh, in a deck. I don't really know why this would be a rare, not a common. But. All right, fledging Stellacorn, three mana, one two with Life Steal and Spell Shield. All right, I don't I don't really think we're playing this card now. I think this, like, yeah, like this. This is definitely worse than Shadow Assassin. At you'd rather have Elusive and draw a card than Life Steal and Spell Shield for sure. And I'm and we're talking about how Shadow Assassin is not powerful enough to play. A one two is just too small of a body to play at three mana. But I think this kind of shows you how good a Spell Shield is if. A unit with spell shield is this weak at three mana. It shows you how valuable having spell shield on a unit is, which also kind of makes the celestials that have the spell shield seem even more ridiculous. If this is how valuable spell shield is on a unit, because remember, spell shield does not go away at end of turn like barrier does. Whenever it's units that are granted spell shield, that is not until end of turn. Giddy Sparkologist. Play. If you behold a Celestial card, grant an ally plus one, plus one, and spell shield. So again, there's a way to grant an ally a spell shield. That is not. In, this does not say until end of turn. That is a shield that will shield that ally from a spell uh, forever until your opponent plays a spell and breaks the spell shield or kills it in combat. Um... So yeah, so that if you behold a celestial card, you're going to be doing pretty great <laughs> anyway, probably. But yeah, like this this card is definitely playable. Two two for three mana. You know now we're, now we're actually talking about in the realm of playability. One two, you're just not you just can't play one power for three mana. Two two, we can for sure. Um, if you get to grant an ally plus one plus one in spell shield, that's super pow powerful, especially if it's on a champion. Um, you know, putting that on. Pick a champion. It's great. So, um, yeah, definitely a playable card here. Uh, Grandfather Rumel. Eight mana, eight four, overwhelm spell shield. Play, grant an ally, plus zero, plus four. 
this could definitely be a playable card in the Freljord, um, Targon, Ramp, War Mother's Call kind of deck, like where you you know eight eight mana is the key if you're trying to do the cards with a Behold an eight plus cost card. Eight power and overwhelm that hits really really hard. Now the thing is, this is going to die pretty easy in combat for an eight drop. You can kind of think of how easy, um, think of how easy Riptide Rex dies in combat. Riptide Rex is 8 mana, it's a 7-4. Think of how it's not too difficult to kill Riptide Rex in combat. That's kind of like this. However, the Overwhelm means that it does get a lot of damage in while it's attacking. And the Spell Shield means that you're not going to just use whatever spell to kill it. Like, sometimes you just use a spell to get rid of a Riptide Rex. That's not going to happen with Grandfather Rumul. But then also, you get that that ability of plus grant an ally, plus zero, plus four. That's a permanent buff. You do that on a ton of different things to make them uh, help have them survive during combat. So it, can, um, so it can be a lot of damage. It's super hard to answer besides just blocking. And so that means you're probably taking the damage because of the spell shield. And then it's also helping protect another unit with the plus zero, plus four uh, permanent buff. So overall, that, that seems pretty good. Like, it's going to be... Yeah, it seems like you're going to get pretty good value out of your 8-mana card. Now, whether... There is definitely a cap of how many 8-mana plus cards that you want to play in a deck. Is this going to be the one that you're playing over other options? That's where the test is going to be. But as it's as its own, like, this is a pretty decent card. Pretty good card there. Um, so, yeah, we'll see if that actually ends up being the card to play. And then we have our Targon Poro... Poro Fly, um, it is a 1-1 one, one with Spell Shield. So that's the, the Poro from Targon is the one with Spell Shield. So that can get you another um, option. That's that's pretty awesome with um, Heart of the Fluffed. Getting Heart of the Fluffed to have Spell Shield seems pretty great because a real problem with, with Heart of the Fluffed is you like take, you know, you eat all of your Poros and you have this like really big, maybe elusive or whatever Poro that Heart of the Fluff has, maybe Overwhelm. Um, but then they can just bounce it with Will of Ionia, kill it with Vengeance, you know, stun it with whatever, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, frostbite it. You can do all those kind of things to your huge Poro that you just spent all of all sorts of resources to create. But if you have a Poro fly in there and now you give the the Heart of the Fluffed Spell Shield, that's going to make that much easier to finish out games. So this is definitely a really good Poro, um, and a good a good Poro that, uh, like, the Lonely Poro can generate being a one-mana Poro. Definitely a good one for the Heart of the Fluffed meme decks. Absolutely. All right. So there we go. So those are the rest of the cards that we did not know about with... Um, Call of the Mountain. From just kind of looking at these, it looks like Bilgewater is a pretty big winner. Uh, both of those cards look pretty good for Bilgewater. Maybe the two best cards out of all of these. The Targon cards overall not too exciting. Um, uh, the Ionia card, the Demacia card, not excited about those. Noxus cards, okay, but maybe not make the cut. And this PNZ card, sneaky good. I think that this one could could be pretty good. <clears throat> yes, that means the Plunder Poro could get Spell Shield. Yep, yep. Plunder Poro will now be able to get the new keywords. Um, so yeah, it will now be able to get Spell Shield as well. Yep. Um, yes, if the Spell Shield broke previously, then the Heart of the Fluffed will not have will not gain the Spell Shield. Uh, because it's it just gains the um, all of the keywords and everything that the, those poros in play currently have. So if you played the spell shield poro and they use something to break that spell, then it will not have spell shield anymore. So the heart of the fluffed would not have spell shield either. All right, there we go. That's the last part of our Call of the Mountain expansion review. That's the rest of the cards. Uh, can't wait till tomorrow. Get to start playing those cards. Those of y'all watch on YouTube, leave those comments of like, what do you want me to play? What do you want to see? Um, what kind of combinations are you excited about? All right, but thank you so much for watching this and I will see you for the next video.